No, thanks, Jen. Call to order um, the June 2nd, 2021 Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please call the roll. Ugarte. Here. Topfest. Here. Smitha Gailey. Here. Anderson. Burton. Blossom. Here. And Baba. Here. Are there any changes to the agenda? Hearing, seeing none. Um, are there any objections to approving the agenda? All right, the agenda is approved. And then the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of April 7th. Are there any changes to the minutes? Any objection to approving the minutes? All right, hearing none, the minutes are approved. <laughs> And there are no presentations with prior notice, nor public hearings or unfinished business. So we'll get into new business right away. Uh, discussion of the commercial zoning district. This is very exciting. Thanks for putting that on the agenda. May we have the staff report, please? Uh, thank you. I'll, I'm going to shift uh, spots here so I can hopefully run the, run the remote. We've got a PowerPoint for you. So. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, um, we have this on the agenda because um, there have been a number of changes in the city over the past several years. And some is bringing me a comfortable chair. Thank you. Uh, again, there's been a, a number of changes over the past several years within our community. It's been about 10 years since we adopted our comprehensive plan. We're seeing we're seeing our, our community grow and change, and um, there's been some question about our commercial district and, and what it should look like uh, in the future. So we wanted to present to you some, some background information, uh, a little bit on our comprehensive plan, a little bit on our downtown plan, and what, what those two plans call for with regard to our commercial zoning district. And then um, briefly talk about some of the changes that we've seen within the community, and then uh, ask uh, if you have any input comments about the zoning district itself and what, uh, whether certain changes or any changes that are, are needed within uh, the current district. So with that, and please interrupt me along the way if you have questions. And I think I just went over this, so we'll skip that. That would have been helpful. Um, so our comprehensive plan, so 10 years old already, and um, as you know, we've made a lot of progress on it. We've done a lot of uh, things, checked off a lot of the, the boxes in the to-do column. Um, our comprehensive plan talks about uh, encouraging economic development by having high quality uh, commercial development in our downtown, promote this pedestrian friendly type of um, uh, community that gets people outside and active in our downtown. And uh, also, one of our goals in the comp plan was to maintain our tax base while improving and maintaining our quality of life. Our comp plan also recognized that our location on the Sterling Highway provides us uh, you know, excellent opportunities for, for taxable sales. Our, our retail base is basically on, on the Sterling Highway and on, on the uh, Kenai Spur Highway. And that linear pattern of commercial properties um, really results in a uh, very narrow commercial zone. And I think you probably all have a copy of the 
zoning map in front of you. The yellow is the commercial, and you can see it's just a yellow ribbon along our, our two main highways. Um, there are few uh, vacant commercial properties in Soldatna. Uh, that has, that's, that's one of the issues that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. And we continue to see demand uh, in our commercial district, uh, both along the Sterling and Spur highways and also near the hospital for medical offices. The uh, comp plan had a specific goal under the economic development section to promote the downtown area um, to both visitors and to residents and to identify focus areas where commercial development could be concentrated. Um, and also to identify uh, public facilities that should be located in our downtown um, and that would help us provide a sense of community um, and provide an area where hopefully people would come to. And as you know, we, we've done some, some things in our downtown now. Uh, you know, tonight's a great example, right? After the meeting, hopefully everybody's going to go down to the park and enjoy um, our, our facilities there and the crowd that it attracts. Another goal of our comprehensive plan with regard to our commercial district and economic development in general is to encourage the reuse or redevelopment of key areas, particularly along the river and the major highways. Um, and, and the next one is to uh, potentially create a highway overlay district with more stringent design standards. And here, too, um, you're, you're aware of some of the more recent efforts that we've taken with regard to the river and the concept of potentially creating a new riverfront Boulevard and expanding the commercial opportunity along the river. That's something that we are, are working on uh, in applying for a grant actually at this time to hopefully facilitate that, that to happen. We also created a downtown improvement plan. So one of the goals actually of the comp plan was to create a, a, a plan for our downtown and we did that the comp plan was in 20, uh, 2011, and the downtown improvement plan came in 2015, I believe it was adopted. And some of the goals related to the commercial district and to our downtown, including uh, promote downtown redevelopment and development for visitors, residents, very similar to what you saw in the comp plan. And again, identify focus areas where growth can uh, concentrate and where we can get some synergy. It also had a, a similar concept with bringing Soldatna to the river or utilizing uh, the river as a, um, an economic development opportunity. And uh, this document in particular really recognized the power of, of the river to really um, fuel our economic growth long term. And so uh, the final one there, integrate the river into our recreational opportunities uh, and into also our, our commercial opportunities. The uh, improvement downtown improvement plan also had a focus on land use, and uh, the suggestion here was to develop projects that increase the ability and desire of people to spend time in and around Soldatna. So again, it's a quality of life concept. And uh, another one was um, make our 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 streetscapes more pedestrian friendly. And one way uh, to do that is to break up our really long blocks into shorter navigable pieces. And so that was uh, one of the suggestions as well. It's also similar to the comp plan, uh, focusing on established centers and build on, on success. And uh, that big red dot in that diagram really, uh, I think, the. Nancy Casey, who, who did the graphics, um, that, that's Soldatna Creek Park. Um, the call also was to create a mix of uses in and near downtown. Um, so that would be a, everything from our, our commercial, uh, you know, which includes our retail, our restaurants, but also incorporating a residential mix. We, we want to get people in our downtown who live there and can participate then and and actually make our, our downtown extend beyond 5 p.m. into 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. When you have that, that critical mass of people in your downtown, those hours can extend and businesses can grow. 
uh, greenway connections. So uh, we've, we've uh, done a little bit of this. We've, we've certainly applied for some grants to make some connections. Um, the plan called for you know, linking our parks and um, we, we've got some, some efforts underway to do that. We certainly have a lot, a lot more to do, but uh, that was one of the, one of the goals. Um, we also talked about linking surrounding areas. So if there's a way to you know, not only uh, link the green spaces adjacent to downtown, but then extend them a little farther to see if we can connect Swift Water Park, Centennial Park, Salteshi Trails, those kinds of assets and resources. And um, the second part of our, down, the downtown plan had two parts, and we just went over the goals that were expressed in the first part. The second part of the downtown improvement plan was called Options for Downtown Redevelopment, and it included a number of uh, policy suggestions and um, concepts for us to consider um, that in this case, uh, again, rela uh, uh, relate to this discussion on our commercial zoning district. So one was uh, about code amendments and streamlined entitlement procedures. So uh, there was a suggestion that maybe an overlay district would be an appropriate use in our downtown. And, and the, the thought here is that it would be a pro-development zoning district um, and project approval process. So what that means is, you know, how can we streamline our, our permitting and entitlement procedures to make it easier for, the, for users to, to navigate, to get their permits, uh, and um, get, you know, get down to business? Um, the second bullet point there identifies the, the conflict when you try to do something like that. Um, you want to move things along quickly, but, uh, but at the same time, um, you want to make sure that you have an attractive, walkable, lively downtown. So there has to be some mechanism there um, that provides some level of oversight so that whatever is approved does meet our, our goals and our standards and does meet this vision of our, of our downtown. So that's something that we'll be considering uh, as we roll forward and, and uh, get more concrete as far as you know, our downtown uh, being modified and, and hopefully getting that riverfront boulevard. Uh, one other consideration was design guidelines and how these uh, guidelines uh, might shape our development. Guidelines, uh, I, I've, I've been involved in, in developing guidelines in, in one community and it had mixed results um, for those who like you know, some assistance in looking at, uh, you know, some of the, the options available to them, it was helpful. But then there's others that just want to, you know, I'm gonna do the bare minimum. I can keep your guidelines. I know what I, I knew what I have to do to get my permit and that's what I'm gonna do. So um, we had mixed results for using guidelines. Another uh, recommendation in the second part of the downtown plan was uh, the relocation of industrial uses and government services. So uh, this one is, is, I think, very important to our downtown. Uh, we need to reduce dead spaces and instead create active, active places. So we need to identify some of those uses really that don't get a lot of, um, that don't bring a lot of activity or a lot of people to our downtown. And so this recommendation was to look at our, for example, some of our government services in the downtown area um, that really don't provide any type of activity or any type of uh, impact to the downtown, whereas uh, an example of something that would. So there's different types of government services, right? So you see a picture there of CES. CES doesn't attract many people uh, to their doorstep. Um, the library, on the other hand, has a constant flow of folks coming in and out. So what this, this goal was is, you know, identify the appropriate uh, institutional, industrial, government services that would act, help activate our downtown, help get people in our downtown versus some of the ones that don't. 
so there may be maybe the, the CES type structures, uh, the police station, those types of buildings, maybe the, the best place isn't on the strip, maybe it's one off. Then that, that, that space can be used for um, other type of active uses, uh, something that's bringing some, some sales tax revenue into, revenue into our community, some property tax revenue into our community, those types of things. So what has changed since plan adoption? I've listed a, a couple things there. Uh, one is the, um, one of the goals in the, the comp plan was to pursue annexation. And as you know, we did that. And right now that decision is being appealed um, to uh, the, the, the courts. Um, but that, that process really, um, I think, helped the city understand um, what it's dealing with long-term as far as its, its fiscal health, and that for it to survive, it's, it's gonna have to expand. It's gonna have to expand its tax base for, because we're at, at 7.4 square miles. Um, we are, we're pretty much maxed out at this point, and we don't have anywhere else to grow. Um, so the, the concept of annexation to support our, our future growth um, you know, as you know, that's on that's on hold right now, and it's it's not not going anywhere, and it may not. Um, so if that if that doesn't happen, we have to get creative as far as you know how do we ensure our fiscal health long term, um, and so that that'll be something that we'll have to have to look at. Uh, growth in the commercial district, we've seen our commercial district and our limited commercial districts both take off. Um, Jen and I regularly have people in our office asking uh, or telling us that they want to locate in Soldatna, but they can't find a place. Can you help us locate a place? And so we spend a, a fair amount of time with, with uh, potential business owners and existing business owners um, either wanting to locate, relocate, or expand within the community, um, but it's getting harder and harder. There are fewer and fewer places. So evidence of that is... Um, you know, uh, the Pita Pit, located kind of off of Smith Way, and right next door to them now is the uh, Black Jack's Barbecue. So people are searching for these, these any place they can along the Sterling to, to get some exposure and take advantage of our incredibly high traffic counts that come through the city of Soldano. So uh, that growth continues. Um, COVID-19, of course, um, has changed since our plan has been adopted. What that has done is, is continued and, and sped up that shift from visiting stores to visiting uh, your, your laptop and, and making your purchases online. And one of the, the shifts that I read about in particular that was threatening uh, was that COVID really, uh, in this, in the case of COVID, really... Um, took it to the next level and that there has always been this reluctant group of users or of people who have, have avoided using the computer to shop. They have now uh, adopted it and they've become familiar with it and they've been co become comfortable with it. So it's, it's notched up one more level. And I guess at this point, I, I'd say, you know, are there other changes that other folks that you know, want to mention that, that I haven't? Because that's, that's, those are the three ones that I was thinking about, but if there's others and you want to share them, please do. If not, they're going to roll on. So uh, here's a copy of the map that you have in front of you. As I mentioned, the yellow is our commercial district. The red is the limited commercial. We're mainly talking about the, our commercial zoning district today. Um, there, our, our district um, in our zoning code provides an intent as to what this zoning district should accomplish. So it states that it should be conven convenient, visually pleasing, contribute to the welfare of our community, and allow to, allow to, uh, a wide range of uses. And it includes a long, long list of permitted uses. And again, for the folks that may not understand or may not be familiar or uh, remember, the types of uses and the process that are, are involved with each. We've got permitted uses, which are what we call by right uses. Those kinds of uses 
all they require is for someone to come in and get an administrative permit for myself or Jen. And then there's conditional uses, and those are the uses that require conditional approval, and they come before you as the, the planning commission. So these uses, I th and I don't remember how many they are, 23, 24, or something like that, are the ones that are the buy right uses. And I, we put them up there because this is the focus of this discussion. Are all these 23, 24 uses under the permitted column and the dozen or so that are under the conditional use column, are they still appropriate for our commercial district uh, considering where we are today as a community and with the, the changes that we've seen? So I, I'm just going to, with you know, go through these really quickly. If you, again, have questions about any of these, stop me. So veterinarians, uh, concert halls, uh, any type of um, maintenance for autos, for cars, boats, mobile homes, RVs, so fuel service repair, all of those types of things are allowed. Uh, churches and religious facilities, private lodges, fraternal organizations, community residents for the handicapped and emergency shelters, daycare centers, uh, eating and drinking establishments, financial services like banks, credit unions, food and storage lockers, funeral homes, greenhouses, guide services, light industry, which includes everything from gunsmithing to taxidermy, um, boarding houses, hotels, motels, museums, all types of offices, uh, parking lots, parks, art studios, barbers, beauticians, those types of uses. Okay, 28 uses. Uh, recreational <laughs> facilities uh, to include things like arcades, bowling alleys, skating rinks. Um, recreation facilities like miniature golf. Uh, repair services for computers and electronics. Um, plumbing and heating. Those types of things. Retail sales, of course. And then uh, a number of different types of schools from dance to our, our traditional elementary, secondary, and college schools. Um, theaters, wholesale sales, and marijuana establishments. I think that's it. Yeah, so so 28 different uses. So I, this is where I just wanted to stop and, and um, get any reactions that you have to that list. And were, are there any uses in particular that stood out where you, you have comments or, or thoughts on? Yeah, and in, in, in looking at um, creating this and looking at other communities, it's really common to see different types of zoning districts within a community. And the, uh, the closer you are to the core, the more restrictive those uses are. And so what, what I've seen is that, um, like, if you were looking at that strip of land between, say, the Y and the bridge, if that was our our commercial core, it would have one set of rules, and then there might be another area that has a little broader set of, of rules, and then the rest of it that maybe allows everything. Um, and what I've seen in particular with regard to autos, and it included things like uh, uh, gas stations, it included auto sales, um, car washes, what I've seen is those types of uses are usually not right in the core, but they're on that second or third tier, depending on, on the community itself. Exactly. Right. Yeah, the only thing that's not is um, cultivation. Correct. Right. 
Did you have any comments or concerns on that for the commercial district? Right. Yeah. Co right. You you can do it, but you you have to, there's a series of buffers that both the state require and the city require. So if schools is 500 feet, uh, city parks is 500 feet, um, libraries is 500 feet. Um, other stores, I believe, and uh, so it's it's what we did is we plotted all those those buffers in the city, and there's a few little islands where marijuana uh, businesses can actually occur within the city, and as you probably know, we've got two of them currently. Um, they they found the holes, <laughs> but uh, um, since since that has been adopted, we haven't had uh, honestly that much interest. Um, I've had one other person. Call and ask about a marijuana business in Sobotna. Um, other comments about our, our list of permitted uses? We do have a, a nuisance code that, that addresses that, and the state also regulates uh, odors. Um, and so they require ventilation systems. And um, so th that was an issue that was brought up when this was first discussed. Yeah, uh, you know, my goal is to hopefully get a, a downtown that's open year round. Um, but at the same time, it's you know, you look at the Homer Spit, right. and it's it's super seasonal, yeah. and um, and it's successful for those four or five months. Um, but boy, yeah, I, I want a business that can make a year round living here if we can. If we can do it, they do. Yeah. Right. I had a, a thought about storage, potentially, maybe not being in the core, and then wholesale also. I'm trying to think of a particular wholesale example, but okay. Yeah. If it's if it's still <laughs> operating as hostess, yeah, I'm not sure honestly what what's happening in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that? Yeah, I love that building. <laughs> oh, and the CES building, I think you know. So we know it's old and maybe earthquakey, but uh, yeah. I think I, I know the concept. Uh, I've been to other markets. And, yeah, right. So a lot of shops, a lot of places for coffees, and yeah, okay. It's almost like an indoor market. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I think that could thrive here. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, there's fat biking and new trails. Um, there's also a great frozen river festival, deer festival in the park. And um, 
ice skating and park race and yeah, movies yeah, in the park. Movies in the park. Yeah. yeah, there's a. I think that's what's nice about Soldana as opposed to like more touristy places like Homer is that we do have like a heavy like people live here year round and it's a community of people who like to have fun and do community things. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Exactly. Any other uh, comments on the, the permitted uses? We can roll to the conditional uses and we can always come back. So conditional uses, again, these are the ones that um, come to you uh, as, a, as a board, as a commission. Um, they have to meet our eight general standards before they can get their permit. So this includes uh, outdoor animal kennels, uh, boat mooring basins, launching sites, campgrounds, uh, community uh, residences like correctional, uh, specifically correctional community residential centers, um, any kind of residential use, whether it's single family, two family, condos, townhouses, it all requires a CUP. Mm -hmm. Heavy industry institutions for the handicapped institutions that are related to health care like nursing or convalescent homes um, lumber yards storage yards transmission towers warehousing including storage trucking or transfer oh wrong one so we've got 13 there different conditional uses that can occur in our commercial zoning district and uh, again i think the the question is, you know, are, are these appropriate for today's Soldatna and the future Soldatna? It is, and it, Right. Yeah, and um, maybe to help to help the discussion, you, you know, we talked uh, earlier about you know some of the goals of the comp plan of, and of the downtown plan. There's you know these ideas of, of overlay zones, and so it's entirely possible, uh, again, for us to have multiple zoning districts where, like we talked earlier, they may not some of these uses may not be appropriate right downtown, but there's probably they probably do belong in either the commercial or the institu institutional or the industrial district. It's, you know, making sure we identify the appropriate disc at the district and we have a place for them in Soldano. We do have one animal boarding facility in town off of um, Lover's Lane, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> so it, um, it used to be, was it the roller rink? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> there haven't been any complaints at that facility. So, but uh, most of it is inside. They do have a small gated area um, on the side of the building where they do allow the dogs to go out for short period of time, but most of the exercise for the animals occurs inside. It's hard to fit it all in in seven and a half square miles. Yeah. And I do think like the reality is that we live within this larger area, which is extends past our maps and is the rest of the spur and the rest of Kay Beach. And so I guess like as we think about the future, um, like if we don't get to expand, um, and it seems as though there were certain areas that wanted to be part of the city and certain areas that didn't, I don't know how that moves forward if there's partial annexation or not, but um, if we can't expand beyond our border as a city, then 
are there things that we are okay that we we don't they're not um, within our city limits but of course they're part of the, the larger community part of Soldatna Soldatna is the hub and I ask that because yeah maybe there are things that that we want to shift from the um, permitted uses to the conditional use list and maybe there are things on the conditional use list that we that we shove off and um, I mean that there, there's only so many places you can go, um, and you say you want a place for everything, but there may not be a place for everything within these seven square miles. But we, that's why we are, you know, have great relation with the borough and have great relation with other, you know, the Kenai, so that we can say we want all these things to be here. Okay. Maybe some of them don't have to be within our these seven square miles. Cell towers. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that we have learned is that you can have a good size community and you can have a good size community. Yeah. Yeah. And you can realize that the size doesn't limit you to the community. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> getting creative yeah covered in some white paint during the winter yeah, yeah. <laughs> green paint in the summer Most likely, yeah. You know, with the considering the the level of uh, process and work that would go into doing something like that, I would think, uh, and I would be a proponent of creating a separate set of rules that would create this this concept that both these plans call for, which is a pedestrian friendly area where people are comfortable walking. Uh, you know, on a, a, a narrower street where cars aren't going 35 and there's five lanes of traffic. Um, so it creates a different environment that, again, would hopefully lead to more more businesses um, and connected to our, our green spaces. I remember going to one of the, um, the American Planning Association things at the conference a few years ago. Um, and we were talking about moving that from 35 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. And I know that people would be like, oh my gosh, it's terrible, 10 miles an hour closer. But they did the math, and it was like, I think, 30 seconds or a minute longer to get through town with that 10 miles reduction in, in speed limit. And so it's just a good thing to know the math in your mind when you're thinking about making, potentially changing those as representatives of the Planning and Zoning Commission, you're getting flack for <laughs> making changes like that. It's actually not that big of a deal to turn our scary roads for pedestrians into something that feels good and is fine for everybody, right. whether you're driving by or walking on the you know, sidewalk or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of... It's really nice to ride to the park and ride to the brewery and ride around town. Um, I wonder how we, like these plans are, are really great and it's awesome to see the, the checklists being checked. Um, one of my questions is like how do, is there something that we as commissioners can do to help um, with this process of, you know, is there, do there, do we need to move the, the dwellings back so, like, if there's a mixed dwelling that we move on to the permitted use that's in the downtown plan, do we just do that as a commission? Or yeah, and, and that's the the reason we're here today is mm -hmm. is to get your thoughts and opinions on um, and requests for yeah those types of actions to you know and actually let me this one yeah so this gets to your your point about housing so. Um, is housing appropriate in all areas of the commercial district? 
the answer very well might be yes, or maybe it's only appropriate and really in the core, but not in the, the outer areas. Um, but maybe, maybe it is. You know, do we need to make it easier for housing to happen in our downtown? And if we do, should it be required that it also have a, a retail element to it? Yeah. And, and so there's there's those kinds of of questions and that the, we're we're considering and um, we're looking for input on. Another one is, is the one that we mentioned earlier, government and public services. Are there certain types of services that are really appropriate in our commercial district um, versus others? And uh, industrial uses, same question. Right now our code allows a number of different industrial uses and you guys have commented about a bunch of them, warehousing, um, trucking, uh, wholesale. So those types of uses, um, perhaps are more appropriate in, a, in an industrial district. Um, one of the, and that also leads to the question of, okay, do we have an industrial district that's, that's big enough that, that potentially could support it, or do we need to expand that, that district? Yeah. And, and so it's, it's a lot of shuffling, but the, the basic question right now is, right, are, are we getting the right pieces in our, our district, or do we need to shuffle them or move them around? And as you said, Caitlin, do some, should some go from conditional use to permitted use or for permitted use to conditional use, you know, what does that shell game look like and how should things go? Um, and then, well, I think I have on here, uh, let me see. I know I had a sticky note. But one of the other things I wanted to share with you is we are getting a lot of different requests for different types of uses within our downtown. So for example, uh, Curly Wright's uh, old building on the corner of um, Marydale and the Spur um, is I think has been purchased and is going to be used as uh, as a church. So the church that is currently in the superstructures building is moving into that facility. We got another or another request from a church to locate in the old Sonora flower shop, and then it was the dog wash place. Mm -hmm. We uh, fielded some calls on um, what was the other non use. Um, remember there was one other uh, um, oh it was a school we got a re uh, request for a school to locate in a, a commercial district building um, so there's a lot of different types of uses some of them again you know we're questioning in our head as we get these uh, you know do is is this what we want our downtown to look like you know do, do we want these uh, you know some of these uses actually might attract a fair amount of people like the school concept Mm -hmm. But a church is really only busy on the, on the Sundays and maybe on a Wednesday. And, and uh, obviously, they don't pay property tax or sales tax. Mm -hmm. um, so again, what, what are the uses we're looking for in our C district and, and what's appropriate? So th some of those kinds of inquiries lately have got us thinking about this. And again, that's why we're here. Yeah, well, there, there may be opportunities, right, um, with uh, industrial uses. So, so there may be a, someone in town that wants to start a business that is, would be classified as industrial, but that might employ 40 people that you know, would be very good for the city of Saldatna. Do we have the ability to, to house that kind of business in town? Where would they go and where, you know, where is it appropriate? Um, so I think it's important for us to keep our options open, but also to have the space for folks to, to do that. This on the is housing, sorry, on the yeah, housing question, it feels like 
you know, the best way I think is in stories and, uh, you know, the, the story of the, of the restaurant turned residence, uh, you know, right on the, on the river oh, there yeah. is, is great for the family who lives there now. And, uh, you know, a great family in our community. So, but the question is a good one of do, I, I think it'd be nice for, um, within that commercial district, especially a downtown corridor, for there to be like a, a retail and and residential. Like if you're going to have dwellings in this downtown corridor, it has to be a mixed use. Um, it's hard to make rules because one size doesn't fit all, but in some way to encourage that downtown corridor to have as much uh, local business opportunity as possible. It feels like to me, the heart of Soldatna are all of our local businesses, especially the the non chain businesses started by folks here and and operated by by local people. So, and also chains are operated by local people and and are add to the mix in a good way too. Um, but I I feel like that that that's kind of what sets us apart from Kenai. It's mm -hmm. what um, you know what makes us a great community in many ways. So how to encourage that? Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. still. Yeah, it is. I wonder if there's a way to encourage that in some way. Um, I think that chains have a leg up because they have like a broader network of capital spread out. And so in many ways, if you're starting a local business, not as a part of a chain, you, you, um, you're not on the same playing field as they are. So if there's a way as a city, we can somehow give our local entrepreneurs a leg up if they want to start a local business. That I think that would be a, a boost or a boon for us as a city. Don't know how to do that in the code, but. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I don't know that uh, they have that ab ability to to restrict certain uh, types of businesses. Mm Well, this is my last slide, so um, you know Jen and I are both available. If you guys have other comments, thoughts, and ideas, just uh, give us a call or shoot us an email. We're, we're available. But I appreciate it. And, and, and again, as you think about these things, uh, please please do contact us and let us know. And um, we'll uh, we'll take this information and um, probably share it with our city manager and talk about whether there's. Um, any short-term changes versus long-term changes that, that might be appropriate? And if so, they would come to you first, and then it would go to, to council uh, second. But uh, we will keep you posted. So thank you.
Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, right now our industrial area is um, the airport and the adjacent lands to the airport. That's our only industrial area. Right, so that's sure, and, and yeah, we've done that. So near the hospital, for example, some areas were expanded. Limited commercial was expanded, and um, in that area, it does. Mm -hmm. Right, when the areas around the hospital were, in fact, uh, when they were rezoned, um, there were some property owners that weren't included in the, the initial drawings that said. I want in. <laughs> they were adjacent, and and they were allowed to to, to add in. But the, the process is similar to what you've seen before. Um, requests for rezonings or a change in zoning do come before you, um, and we get your recommendation. The council has the final say in that. Um, the public can request a uh, rezone. Um, it either has to enlarge an existing district or the parcel has to be at least two and a half acres. The Planning Commission can initiate a rezone. The Council can initiate a rezone. Uh, so there's, there's different ways that it can happen. But um, I think we do, what, maybe one, one a year or so? Maybe some years we do two, but it's, it's not that often that we see them. Right. So, yes. So, and that's why I mentioned that, that there may be some things um, that, that are appropriate in the very near short term, and then other things that are going to take a whole lot of thought and, and um, to, to make everything work, because it had, does have that domino effect uh, and, and implications for all the other zoning districts and all the other land uses and how they're going to be uh, treated. So it, re it really is uh, a, a major undertaking. Um, but what this, what we wanted to do with this is kind of, uh, kind of gauge the, the feeling, the temperature of whether, um, there's a feeling for, you know, is there a need? And if so, what, what kinds of things, um, potentially should be, you know, looked at and modified. I'd love to see some, uh, different options for, you know, helping incentivize local businesses um, in a fair balance with chains and box stores, because I know you need both, but um, potentially there's a way to, perhaps this is already happening with the Starbucks um, building. I think there are other openings in that building, and is it, uh, it could be a requirement of the city that those be, be, be filled by local um, businesses. You know, I, I don't think it's, yeah, percentage, or and I don't think that we have a mechanism to do that now. But I'm just saying that's yeah, and, yeah, and I'm not even sure on on the legality of it. Honestly, yeah, um, it, it's something we would have to look at. But um, yeah, it, it, and that's something we can look at uh, because I'm sure there's some creative community that's figured out a way to do this and, and figured out some incentives or disincentives to to yeah make that happen. And and maybe it's based on size, right? Right. Um, rather than on who you are, but... Well, yeah, it's just like if it's for sales to the highest bidder, then of course it's always going to go to a chain or a box or who has more capital. And if we don't, if we want part of, you know, both, then we have to figure out a way to make it available. And I think the, the, the big market where you have small stalls available at a lower rent and that you only allow local makers, like that's a great way to enable that kind of stuff to happen. And it, right. Yeah. Right. I don't know how you do that um, 
in a place that's that's already happening and is, is uh, could include some local businesses if we can figure out how to <laughs> encourage that. Um, yeah, we'll basically. look into that. See if we come up with anything. All of these plans, it's nice that they are on the website um, and that you can go. They're easy to find, and I read through them before coming here, and it's, I think we've got some of the best plans out there, and our staff is awesome in actually checking some of the things off on the to-do list every single year. Um, it makes me feel proud to be a part of it, even though um, I know that you guys do all the hard work. and. So, yeah. oh, well, well, thanks again. I appreciate everybody's input, and feel free to give us a shout. Uh, thanks, Tom. Okay. Um, we do have an official uh, time for public comments. Um, so, if there's anybody from the public who wishes to comment, um, please please feel free to do so. Do you mind, since you did make a comment earlier, can you step up to the microphone and push the push button and state your name for the public record? Thank you. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Brien. And and your address, just just oh. for the for the record, sorry. Oh. No, it's okay. Um, and uh, I live on <clears throat> uh, 354 23 uh, Funny um, Goodyear Street. Thank you. Yeah, we could easily be swapped. You could be sitting in this seat and I could be over there and you, <laughs> I could awkwardly get up and use that microphone too, so thank you. Um, thanks for coming and it's really nice to have participation and, and talk about our community together, so thanks. Um, we don't have any informational items, uh, so we do have um, reports and Council Member Hutchins is here and we'd love to hear your report. <laughs> and we did have like this time last time there was um, a seven fifty dollar meal that took place fifty dollars um, uh, for dinner and all and um, we had apple fry dip for dinner and then fifty dollars of other um, extra appetizers and desserts that we shared with each other that we had last time. There are just so many better ones. Some of them are Thank you. Um, and don't. So the city manager report. Um, Kyle is sorry. Kyle is not here. Okay. So, um, but we do have uh, ED and P uh, city planner report. So, John. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple things to report, and um, one good piece of news that we received today, we got an email from uh, the state and from FEMA, and our hazard plan is officially adopted and done. So, yeah, I put the check in that box. <laughs> I'm happy to be done with that. Um, we also are looking for uh, a volunteer from the city to serve on the Kenai Peninsula Borough Planning Commission. So the the uh, the city is is one of the um, geographic areas that serves on the borough planning department or on the borough planning commission it's a three-year term they do represent the city of soldatna the last i'm trying to think who the last person was that that represented the city it was probably paul whitney um then the city was taken off the borough planning commission because they're population has shifted in the borough and so what they went to is a rotation of uh, cities that serve so the first round the first three years we were off the next three years we're going to be on Seldovia falls off three years from now I think Homer falls off and you know so anyway there's this continued rotation that happens with the communities and we're up and so um, uh, it can be a member of the planning commission. Our planning commission can also be a, a council member. 
Um, but we are uh, in desperate need of someone. If, if you have an interest, I would need to know tonight because um, Shelley's has to send the packet in tomorrow. And so if you have the faintest interest, please contact me after the meeting and I can provide you more detail and get your name to Shelly. And then um, I'm gonna let Jen talk about outdoor dining grants, but I did wanna share that, uh, that as you probably have seen, trees are being planted in the right way. Uh, the flowers have been hung. It's, it's uh, starting to look good out there. Um, what else? Our storefront improvement program grant is accepting applications until June 18th. We've already got, I think, two or three, three, three. So that's uh, very positive. Um, Ralph Lynn, our building official, retired. If you didn't know that, he, his last day was last Friday. And uh, so we are in the process of looking to uh, fill his shoes. Um, we are working with an independent contractor right now to research opportunities for grants for uh, planning for to address the homeless situation in the, the city and in the central peninsula. So um, we're trying to identify what monies are out there and then to see if, if um, some of them would be suitable for the, uh, the group of nonprofits and faith-based communities to apply for those funds. Um, you probably know this, and I can't remember if we reported it last time, but Pamela Parker did resign from the city council. And so um, at our next meeting, there will be an opportunity for folks to, uh, well, actually, the, the period to get on that list has closed if you wanted to be considered to be appointed for city council. We have two persons um, who have put their name in the hat. One of them is sitting next to me. <laughs> Mr. Hugarte is going to be at the council meeting next, uh, next, next Wednesday. And then also Gloria Sweeney is the other person. So uh, we'll have a new council member. Last is that um, it looks like we are going to get some additional COVID funding through ARPA. Um, we're not sure the exact amount. We're, we're get, starting to get details on that. Um, it looks like we'll probably get it somewhere around a million dollars. It'll be in two separate uh, tranches of money. Um, it'll be a longer, it looks like it's going to be a longer period of time that we'll have to spend those funds. But um, we'll keep you posted as, as those details become available. And um, we'll, I'm sure, be looking for input on ideas on, on how that money also would be spent. And that is all I have. So thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks, John. We'll move to council member comments and I'll start with, with Eric. Yeah. I guess we're not council member. I guess we're commissioners, huh? I was just, uh, you know, foreshadowing. It's nice to meet all of you and see all of you here again today. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too. Shirley? Just great to be here in person and see everybody. Thank yeah. you. No comment. Bruce? Comment. I'll just say, um, I appreciated this topic coming on the agenda, so thanks, John and Jen, and the conversation. Thanks to all of you. Um, I hope that you reach out to staff, and as new ideas from this conversation pop to mind, reach out. Uh, I know I will. And um, yeah, I appreciate that all of the staff work that goes on behind the scenes to check some of these boxes on these plans and, and have flowers on the streets and have um, things happening in our parks. It's really nice to see. And I, um, as, a, as a commissioner, want to know how, um, you know, please let us know how we can help some of these things happen if there's ways that we can um, help with, with grants or to be a more active commission um, in helping get some of these things checked off of our boxes. It's... Uh, I think that's why we're all here and we want to be of service so please use us and um, without further ado I guess we have lots of time to get over to the park and enjoy enjoy what's going on so thanks everybody meeting is adjourned